All right, another survival challenge. This time, something a little different. People challenged me in the past to do a Walmart, but we're gonna do a family dollar survival challenge. Walmart's easy. You can buy all the fishing gear. You can buy all the stuff you need, but family dollar, I but dollar general island survival challenge. I think that's a bit different. And since dollar general, such a hot topic on Reddit and everywhere else right now, we're gonna have to do a really unique survival with it. Especially because the goal is, since it's not Walmart and I can't just buy fishing gear, is to be, make it as unique as possible. I need to find the things and uh, transform them into what I need to be able to catch and cook and survive for an overnight on an island. Let's do it. Zachary Fowler, and you're watching Fowler's Makery and Mischief. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so the unique aspect of this whole survival challenge is that it's not Walmart. So I can't buy a fishing pole, I can't buy hooks and lures and try to survive with just that. There's all kinds of unique home stuff here, so I'm gonna have to be inventive, super creative if I wanna be comfortable when I go out to survive on the island. I'm even gonna empty my pockets. I'm not carrying my everyday carry with me, so it'll be a true, just what I could find here, what I have on me for clothes right now, my fall raven pants, hat. If I want sunglasses, I'm gonna have to buy those. Stick to less than $100, but mainly what's unique and what'll get me through the night comfortably and help me catch and cook something, right? I really don't see anything even in the hardware aisle that's gonna help me survive. I don't think there's a fishing aisle here. Oh, we got a little kid's slingshot. I don't think that would help me very much. <laughs> yeah, some straws if I was uh, trying to catch some turtles. Sorry, is that too soon? Bad joke? We'll stay away from uh, anything harmful to the environment. Everything we bring out with us will have to come back. Uh, nothing in this aisle. Well, maybe down in cooking. At least I know there's something there that I can use to cook. Possibly a knife. I don't see knives anywhere else. There's that knife for a dollar. I think that's a good start. Simple paring knife. Ooh, cast iron pan for 10 bucks. That's tempting. I need something that I could boil some water in, be able to drink. I don't know what the cheapest of that is. Nine bucks. Baking pan. I don't even know if it's safe to boil water. I'm gonna go with the baking pan. I think I'm literally gonna have to go up and down every aisle. I did not think of this in advance, like scout this out. This was just an idea I had two days ago and I purposely didn't come in the store so I'd have too much time to overthink it. I just wanted to go for it. Four dollars worth of line. Um, that might be enough. Laundry hamper. I was thinking like a fish fish trap or something with the laundry hamper. There's got to be something better than that. Or simpler than that. I need something for a tarp and some bedding, which <laughs> I could sleep in style here. I have a pillow. Although... The question is, will it be dry by the time it makes it out there? Because you wait to see the boat I'm going to use. I didn't want to use anything too frivolous, so the boat is super lack frivol. <laughs> this twin set of sheets here is a little cheaper. The cheapest. 12 bucks. What do we got for a ring cover? Let's see, 8 bucks for a shower curtain or something else. I'm going to grab that for now. I might exchange that for something else. That should be enough for like a, a tarp and be underneath of it with my little sheets. Anything in the cleaning aisle? I don't normally do this, but I won't have a I won't have a screen, so I'm gonna go with bug dope. I'm gonna go with the most crazy bug dope or bug repellent. This one, the Deep Forty. Whatever I can do to stay bug free, cause getting chewed on. Getting chewed up, not on my list of things to do. Ooh, 
good old roll of traditional duct tape. I think that's just got to be, I mean, I've already got plenty of duct tape left at home, but I'm only allowed to use what I have here. Now, I will need a little headlamp. That looks like the cheesiest headlamp I've ever, I've ever seen. I don't know. Eight by 10 tarp. All right. Yeah. Shower curtain can go back. There we go. Goggles, only a dollar. Those might be handy. I could use those to maybe swim around, find some better lures, and be able to catch something bigger like a bass instead of just something small. Oh, here we go. Charcoal briquettes, match light. There's nothing on this island. This is the one I did the one on earlier, the tiny island survival challenge. I've used up all the firewood. And now since then, Chris has been out there and he did a survival thing. And so if I'm gonna actually cook my meal, I think I'm gonna need something to cook it on. So we're getting briquettes. Only two aisles left and I haven't seen what I need to be able to catch fish just yet. Maybe some swim trunks. Get the camo ones with the American flag. Two X I'll literally be swimming in these while swimming in these. So, but at least I'll be able to go and look for lures, see if I can't find a lure. Oh no. Uh, this is all I can find to use as fishing line. Hopefully that'll work. I don't want it to be minty. Get a couple packets of those. We just need hooks. Last aisle, I don't need eyeshadow. I don't need shampoo. We don't need shampoo where we're going. I need some sort of a safety pin or a bobby pin or something I can use as a fishing hook and something I can use as a net. No safety pins in the baby stuff. Unless everybody uses Velcro diapers and things these days. That goes my fishing hook idea. Some of these hair barrettes though might make a good fishing lure. Oh, there are safety pins. Safety pins. Dry bag. All right, last but not least, a lighter. And look at this beautiful waterproof survival torch. Let's see, does it work? Oh yeah. All right, we don't have any as seen on TV stuff yet, so I'm gonna trade in this little pan for the as seen on TV pot, or this guy here. So I'll give you that. Let's go with one of those guys. There we go. Now I have everything I need. This eggs don't stick to it. It's as seen on TV. Is it good as as seen on TV? We'll let you know after this. Let's ring out, see how much I spent. Anything else? Whoa. That's my total? Yeah. A hundred. All right, we've got to take something out. Okay. i got to stay at least under a hundred. I'm trying to be creative. But, all right, we're going to live without the duct tape. We're going to risk it, and we're going to live without the duct tape. Keeping the pan, getting rid of the duct tape. 95.49. That's better. Let's see. I thought it was more than that. I thought I was going to spend like 43 bucks. But I did get a little carried away. All right, you might be wondering why all of that cost so much. There was four, four or five secret items that I purchased, so it was 95 bucks. And you'll see the four or five secret items when we get out there and we do our thing. Let's go uh, have an adventure. We are off and away. I got my supplies, put it behind me. Got my camera box in here. And other than that, I dumped out all my everyday carry pocket stuff in the car. I can already feel she's leaking. I didn't do anything to the duct tape kayak. For those of you who haven't seen the duct tape kayak, check out the link below. I built a boat and escaped an island with it. So I thought I want to get some more use out of it. Wanted to run this whole adventure as a kind of a cheap adventure. And, well, we haven't sank yet. All I really need to do is make it to the island. So maybe more paddling, paddling, less talking. Oh, 
and I haven't done anything more to the duct tape boat. The only thing I did is threw away my other paddle and built this kayak paddle in hopes that it would help me to paddle faster and less crossing over the boat and getting water into it. So I think we're doing good. I tell you one other weird thing about paddling this is the the way it moves with the water. The the old Aleutian kayaks that they built, the Aleut Indians built, they would had like bone in between some of the joints so they could flex with the waves and stuff. This thing is flexing and moving all over the place. It's a kind of an awkward feeling. Uh-oh. I got about that one knuckles one knuckles worth of water in the bottom right underneath my butt i don't know about the front or back should have put the swim trunks on to start <laughs> mm. looks like we're up to about oof a whole finger's worth of water in the bottom right under my butt <laughs> battle faster both ends of the kayak are still up out of the water Uh-oh, uh-oh, we're about to swamp. Oh, we're so close, we're so close. There's the island just ahead of us, but it's almost over the edges. I shouldn't have stopped to talk. Oh Lord, won't you make it, help us make it to the island today. I should have bought that roll of duct tape and got rid of something else. If it goes over the edges, we're swamping, it'll go under, we'll lose everything. Oh no, I just felt the bottom give away. Oh. We're almost there. Oh, we made it. I feel rocks underneath of me. Trying to get my, ah! Trying to get my feet out. Ah! My shoes are stuck. <sighs> oh, my bag's floating off on my gear. Oh, that was close. That was close. Oh, that was close. Oh, phew. Camera box stayed dry. What a mess. I had a feeling I should put more duct tape on. I just wanted to see what would happen. I think after it sat and then, you know, it's been three weeks. So after all that sitting and stuff, apparently duct tape unstuck from itself too much. And she's taken on a lot of water. I don't know what's scarier, how fast that thing sank or how fast it was to pour the water out of it, out of the top of it where it was supposed to be still be sealed or the sides of it. It looks great on the bottom. I don't see anything. Must be coming from just little pin holes between the duct tapes all over the thing, even though it's got over four layers on the bottom. But whatever, we're out here, we made it. Now we just gotta catch some fish, make myself something to eat and set up uh, camp for the night. Oh, gross. This is where I was going to sleep. Just so much goose poop. I don't see any geese. Mullen. Mullen. Which, uh, it's not very much of it there. And it's illegal, but if you did want to, in a real, real survival situation, you could use mullein to poison fish. If you had a small enough area and enough of it, you could make like a spot for the fish to shelter and you put it in there and it uh, makes them pass out or something. 
Uh, I've never done it though, because it's illegal. I just know I've read about it. This was not, not like this last time. Ugh. This place is just covered in it. Ugh. Oh, there's some more big mullen. And I believe this is purslin. We can eat this. But considering where it's growing with all the goose poop, I don't know. It's a kind of a succulent. It's a really beautiful plant. Oh, and uh, some rose hips that aren't ripe yet, or aren't ready. So unlike last time when we came here in the spring, there wasn't anything. There's all kinds of life here now. All kinds of plants. Oh, just look at it. I could have been out here a week from now. Oh, these high bush blueberries just all through here. Mmm. Oh my goodness, mmm. It's so rich. You know what? Even though they're not ready yet, some of these ones are a little bit red. It's probably all the goose poop. There's some really rich soil here. Mmm. One more week. Would have had the most delicious ripe blueberries. Maybe anywhere in the state of Maine, all this goose poop. All right, well, that's not gonna help us much. We gotta catch a fish with the stuff we brought with us. This spot seems relatively goose poop free. I can actually smell it now. It's almost like all of it's fresh. Like lately they just mobbed the place again. I did, like I said, a couple secret items. It's super hot out today. I bought a bottled water. The water in this lake, I like eating fish and catching fish out of here, but something about it, unless you really, really boil it a lot, it's, it just looks so gnarly sometimes at this time of the year. That's part of my camera gear, got my shorts. I guess I could have saved some money and not got bugged up. There doesn't seem to be a single bug out here. All right, time to catch fish. Safety pins and dental floss. See if we can make this happen. All right, if I could turn over some rocks here and find like a dragonfly nymph or something to put on my hook, something they can't resist. Maybe I should get the swim trunks on. <sighs> ants, lots of ants. They're hard to get onto the hook. Some larvae. Ant eggs. That was fresh enough. Put it on the hook. Oh yeah. There we go. Ant eggs. Need a rock for a sinker and casting. That should do it. Turned out pretty, pretty good. I like my one of my favorite knots. That was a clove hitch. I'm gonna use my water bottle to cast. Tie it around the neck. Hopefully. Some little perch or something comes along and just chokes it. All right, the lily pads are right out there, 18 feet away. Let's see if I can cast all the way out there. That's, I believe, the hot spot. I'm gonna set it right at the bottom of those ant eggs on there. Here we go. Oh yeah, right there. Perfect cast. That was like 20 feet. Oh, look at all the weeds. It's pretty good too. Oh Lord. Oh, could be a bite. 
Why don't you give me a fish for dinner? My friends all have cheeseburgers. I'd like a winner. Had a bite, had a bite, had a nibble. Some interest. I don't know if he stripped me or not. I'm gonna see if I get him. Give me a bigger hunk of bait so they commit to it for longer than a little nibble. Oh, my hook's empty. All right, no luck on the fishing so far. I think I'm going to, before it gets too dark, go swim around, see what I can find. If I can find something that, uh, a better fishing lure, a better hook, uh, some bigger grub, from down deeper. Hopefully I can still see and all this. Maybe I waited too long. I mean, it's still three hours before dark, but it's so overcast. Wow. Even for one dollar, these goggles are pretty cheap. I don't know. It is so murky and these things have a slight tint and it's so dark. This is the worst lake for swimming around in and trying to see stuff. Zebra mussel. I've never tried. I don't think I've ever tried to catch something with one of those, but maybe chopping it up. Maybe there's a certain part of them that'll uh, that'll do it. And one of these zebra mussels, we'll give that a try. Oh man, I know I have lots of fishing lures in here, and I'm sure a lot of other people have, but it is so creepy down there. It's so hard to stay under, it's like, I just want to get out of here. <laughs> it's so creepy. little little fish and one little fish this is that's discouraging no lures <laughs> I got oh shoot And then he, I tried to grab him better and he out of my finger. No luck. No luck. I don't know. Oh, between the murkiness of the water, uh, losing that one crawfish, I thought maybe I could use that to catch a catch a bass and catch a bass. Bass. Yeah. So murky. I did see three fish. Alright. Make a new hook. I'm gonna make a fire. Maybe that's preemptive, uh, pre-hoping to catch a fish. Like if I, if I get a fire going, I'll have something to cook on it. I'll uh, get it going with my beautiful pink survival lighter here. <laughs> Ha! A little frog. That might catch us a fish. Let's try for a bigger fish. Yes! What do I do with them? Got some rope. There. 
put them in my bottle. All right, that means we gotta make a bigger bass hook. Now I'm wishing I really had found just one lure while swimming around. Just one lure with one decent hook on it. That's one gnarly looking bass hook. Twisted three of the pins together. And I tried to use that as a treble with the frog. Reinforced it by lashing it all together. Just gotta maybe bend those hooks in just a little bit. It's not pretty, but she's snug. It's all tied on. Now, to get the frog on there and catch something with him. I almost feel bad for the little guy a little bit. I do feel bad for him a little bit, but he's for catching me dinner. Can't lose him. I just safety pinned him onto the, to the hook. Let's see if we can catch a bass. It's not pretty. Whether I can get a hook set with this, I don't know. Maybe the other side. Something's got it. Something's got him. Should I let it run? I got something. Fish on. Fish on. Nope. Lost it. Dang. Maybe I gotta let him take it. Let him take it like I'm ice fishing. <laughs> oh, if I had a good hook, I would have had something. All the way around the island and back. Nothing doing. I'm gonna leave him out here. See if a chain pickerel or something bigger comes cruising through here and I'll take him up. Let him. Consider it all joy, my brother, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And that endurance have its perfect result, that you may be made perfect. Lacking for nothing. Wouldn't be fun if it wasn't difficult some of the time, huh? I didn't really expect, though, this to be a challenging challenge. I don't know what uh, happened, whether it's the, you know, the lack of fish is due to the, the storm recently, is my guess. And uh, the just... The water rose like a foot and a half, and so the bite is kind of minimal. I miss all my gadgets and gizmos, I tell you. <laughs> oh, the gadgets and gizmos are plenty, and uh, I know I could have nailed a fish by now, even if it was a bad fish day. I would have had the right stuff with me. You know, some worms. They aren't biting, I don't care. You throw a worm on the right kind of lure, just all about whatever is the right kind of lure that they're in the mood for, whether it's something that they want to attack, it's something they want to eat. You find that right combination out. The ones that are eaten are down deep, the ones that are eaten are by the shore. You figure that out, you're doing good. Well, it lights up. That's something. Smokers. 
Driving by in there. Floating palaces. I think a chain pickerel found this guy and he just tore him to shreds. But he couldn't get him, so he gave up. Alright, well, the frog didn't work out so well. So I got that nasty muscle I found while swimming. Let's see if uh, that does anything. Ugh. When they're out there at the bottom of the lake looking all smarmy and they're like gulping or whatever they do to suck stuff in. It looks, maybe this one's fresher than others. I've seen them opened up before and they're just full of scummy grossness. It doesn't look very appetizing. I don't even think you can eat these. I mean, I think there is a certain rhyme or something, but I wouldn't eat them out of this lake. I love this lake, don't get me wrong, it's just, that seems kind of gross. Maybe if something chokes that down, put that chunk of meat on there. I'm just sitting here, look what I see floating by, a uh, big old mayfly. I don't dare to let go of it, it's still kind of alive. I'm going to throw that on the hook, try that, finally. Well, I'm bored. I don't think I've ever been so wildly unsuccessful as this, you know? I bought some tortillas. I even tried that earlier, you know? I, I have Those eggs and stuff are getting me bites, though. Better than a little piece of tortilla. I've never used bread before, so I thought I'd try that out. Um, this was my secret ingredients, is I have tortillas, pork rinds, olive oil. I was gonna... Take some fish, bread it up, put it in the pan, do it nice and fancy. Instead, I'm sitting here frying up a couple tortillas for a snack because I'm bored. So far, the bug dope was a wasted purchase. The, uh, the hair scrunchies, I'll give those to my girls because my hooks aren't working well, so I can't really do some active bass fishing with those, try to use those as, like, baits. Um, the tarp, I think I'm just going to lay that down and put my blankets on it, and then over me, blankets over me, and then roll the tarp over me. That way I'm not laying in goose poop. Can't think of. Mm. Oh, Lord, thank you for this tortilla, meager fare. Would've liked the fish, but I understand you always give them to me on every other trip, so I appreciate it then. In Jesus' name, amen. I. <laughs> it's been a great day. It's been more of a learning thing than anything else. Um, I always knew it was a pain in the neck catching fish without a good hook. But I've done it a couple other times. I thought I could do it again. But the fishing situation has to be just right. You need to kind of cane pole type thing for something like this. Pluck them right out and they're just not biting. Now, some tortillas. I'm going to roll myself up like a burrito in my blankets and maybe even snug a hot rock in there with me. I'll get up early though. I'm going to get up at 5 and uh, see if I can't change my luck here. <laughs> Might be comfortable. That's working. I'm gonna kind of use the uh, tarp as a bivy bag to increase my warmth should I get cold, but I think I only need the sheet. Got my fitted sheet down around my feet, and the other sheet underneath of me. <sighs> All right. So I literally didn't, I don't think I have the tarp laying on any goose poop, so I was thinking I would use my paddle to maybe scoop some out of the way. Lay a tarp, so nothing's pooped here in the recent. <laughs> That's nice. Not to have to go to sleep and poop. No mosquitoes. I 
I'm going to bed. I'll see you about, uh, oh, sun up, 5 in the morning, something like that, 4.30. See you in a few. Morning. I don't know. I almost want to keep sleeping. I mean, it was like 11.30 um, when I said goodnight to you, and uh, now it's 5 o'clock. I want another crack of that fish, but I am so comfortable, so comfortable. Oh. Maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the snooze for just a little bit. All right, it's 5.30, I never really fell back, <laughs> never really fell back asleep. Let's take another crack at those fish. Oh, it's beautiful out. Can't believe how well that worked out. Soggy, wet. Ooh, oh, it's so damp out, my pants didn't even dry a little bit. I would like a sweatshirt right now, but I didn't buy one at Family Dollar, so I don't have one. Oh. Kind of wish I had just grabbed some spam and eggs. I'm at Family Dollar. That's what they're best for is the late night uh, munchy food, uh, bacon flavored spam, or even regular bacon or croissants that have little cheeseburgers in them or oh man anything from their cooler section all that delicious little stuff i could have had a wonderful little meal out here instead i'm like oh i'll just get like one or two ingredients and i'll catch what i want have the most epic meal ever the blueberries aren't ripe should i come back and do a uh catch and cook blueberry pie another week or so those are going to be pretty ripe and pretty awesome Little tortilla, tortilla on my hook, I want a fishy, come and take a look Mr. Fish. I've been out here too long, I'm going crazy, little tortilla fish. I'll start another little fire, so stay warm, anticipating the catch of a fish. Oh, it looks like I did catch one thing. I got a big old mayfly in my pan. I'll throw that on the, it's all oily. But maybe, as soon as it get dark here, it was crazy. I was looking around, there's just beetles and stuff. Just, the whole thing just came to life. I have to take another trip to Family Dollar after this. <laughs> Grab me some Spam and eggs for breakfast. Here's the last of my water. I do keep pulling back a bare hook, I don't know. Tortilla getting bit off or melting off. All right, gonna try the Folgers instant. Last of my silly purchases I haven't actually played with outside of the rope, the hair barrettes, and the bug dope. I think so far the biggest winner of this whole thing was the briquettes, the lighter, and the knife. And uh, the dental floss uh, seems like it's a great, great uh, option for fishing line. I don't think it was the dental floss's fault that I lost the frog to the chain pickerel. Uh, you know, all the other times my line was stripped, it's my homemade hooks that were the big fail and uh, of course the tarp and the sheet made a great great sleeping unit if it was colder it wouldn't have been so but uh, I could have also taken the pillowcase and wrapped a hot rock in it and had been super snuggy with that maybe 20 degrees colder and I would have been 
a little uncomfortable and rolling around a bit more. Lake's pretty quiet. All the mayflies that were here last night, I would have thought there'd be some little in the morning. Well, it wasn't the successful trip I was hoping for, but uh, it was a learning experience, and that's what that's what it's all about. I wanted to learn nothing. I'd sit at home and watch other people have adventures on TV all the time, right? You gotta get out there and do stuff. Otherwise, you're never gonna grow. You're never gonna learn. You're never gonna get better. And it's not just about learning and getting better about the outdoors. It's You're learning about yourself. You're learning about God's creation and how beautiful things can be when you just open your eyes and listen and look and experience and taste them. Except for this time, we're not doing a lot of tasting here. We're not doing a lot of tasting. But uh, <laughs> we're out doing a lot of trying and that's, that's what counts. <laughs> so in light of that, I think this leaves a lot of room for somebody to do some fun videos about. I challenge you, Greg Ovens, Wood of Beardsman, Ace Videos, uh, Outdoor Boys, and Chris Taylor, Mainstream Adventures. See if you guys can do a better job of this than me. I think you guys up in Canada, Greg and uh, Woodbeard there, you guys have uh, Dollar Trees or something like that. Cause you don't have Dollar Generals up there, but the same company does Dollar Tree. And uh, everybody here in America, there's a family dollar in any... I give up. Corner. So anybody could do this. So if you do it, tag me in it. I'd love to see if you could do a better job, catch something. I think it's a pretty neat aspect. I love trying to catch a fish when you don't have a right hook. I'll have to come back. I'll do it again. Ah, they're jumping out. They're hitting stuff hard on the surface out there. Ah. <laughs> it's frustrating. Ah. Consider it all joy. Not even a nibble. All right, trying the instant pan coffee. If this is a fail too, I'm out of here. <laughs> okay, I was prepared to spit it out and just run, run for shore, paddle for shore, but that's about the best thing I got going for me right now. It's so good. It's so disgusting, but it's it's so gross, but it's so good. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you for Folgers Instant Coffee. It's so, <laughs> it's so gross. It's so gross, but it's so good. <laughs> Uh, you just don't, you don't even know. You don't know. Oh, it's so gross. It's so good. not comfortable my butt I did not get my seat as in as good a place as I did well goodbye little island thank you for another wonderful time all right we're doing good if I don't stop to talk to you I should be able to make it back before she sings <laughs> one finger depth of water under my butt I don't feel wet yet it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. The neighborhood, oh. It is just sad though, passing some of my favorite fishing spots. 
you know like I don't even fish them more often than not anymore because I just know I'll always catch a fish there so we try other spots but I was hoping it would have panned out for me today or yesterday I'm gonna get home before we sink like I said before if you haven't seen it yet she was a lot better when I built her that first day and I escaped a choppy well not super choppy but a little bit choppy ocean island out in the ocean build and escape check out the link below if you want to see this duct tape adventure it turned out a lot better than this one what a wild ride that one was i thought i set myself a, a smaller goal on this one i did not expect this one to be nearly as difficult to achieve the ideas i had still i spent a comfortable night and i survived well, we're only up to one knuckles worth of water already and I can just start to feel it on my butt. That's not bad. I just keep waiting to hear like a little or something and like one of the sticks pokes through and I just start going straight down. How oh, halfway there. About three knuckles of water all of a sudden. Not looking not good. It's taking on water faster than yesterday's. I don't know if I'll make it back. I might have to swim it in. I hope that camera box stays sealed. The more water it is, the more tippy it gets. I gotta keep it upright. If I go over the, the sides, there's only three inches. If I tip to the side, she'll take on water and I'm down. I think the worse, the further it gets into the water, the more tape holes there are closer to the top on the sides. That's why she's taking on water quicker. Oh, my arms are burning. These paddles, they weigh a ton and they're not doing a lot of work. Not nearly as much as a regular paddle. 300 yards to go and the water's up to here. I can't tip. Oh, it's gonna be close. Woo, I think we got it. Ah, they're grabbing at me. I think we did better than the way out. We made it. Ha <laughs> ha Oh, there we go, terra firma. Touchdown. And I still had, I still had two more inches of freeboard. Two more inches. Look at that. Thank you, duct tape boat. What a champion. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Fowler, definitely out. I'm gonna go get some spam and eggs. Oh, I broke it. All right. Lord, thank you for the spam. Thank you for the bacon. Mmm. Can't all be gourmet meals. Mmm. Woohoo. Big bite. Mmm. Should have just brought this stuff with me from the beginning. Mm. Alright, so I bought this tiny house thinking that I would make some sort of a camper for ice fishing and for going out and it's kind of in a bad shape. So we'll save the remodel of this for another video. I was at the East Coast Slingshot Tournament the other day though and I saw this really great tiny camper, a little teardrop one. I thought I'd build my own. So my friend the Happy Hippie built this. It looks beautiful. He just built it from a trailer at Harbor Freight and Home Depot plywood. I went over to Vikings, I bought some of this marine plywood, nine sheets of plywood, thousand dollars worth of materials and we're gonna build a camper. So I picked up a trailer on Facebook. Now the only question is what kind of camper to build? Do I copy him, build a teardrop? I was actually thinking about changing that whole teardrop idea and maybe doing something that resembled the lines of my car. After my friends at EcoFlow saw my new adventure camper ideas, they said they have just the thing for me to power my new little adventure mobile. And they sent me their new EcoFlow Delta Max, which just came out today on Kickstarter. Wow, that's up. That's a lot of power. <laughs> they also sent me 
two of their battery extension packs for this. With the X-Boost technology in this thing, you can power 99% of all ported items. We're talking skill saws, you know, chop saws, table, little table saws, contractor type saws, anything that's like 110, 99% of the stuff, AC units, it's perfect for your camps, for your tiny campers, your big campers, and it charges off of solar panels. I mean, like my last adventure, uh, bigger one, the 30 Day Survival Challenge in the Rockies, we ended with one battery bar left on the camera because our solar panels and power packs just didn't pack enough power. Check out that link in the description here. You get it now on Kickstarter, you can get it for $16.99. When it's done with the Kickstarter though, it's gonna be $400 more, so now is the time to buy in on that Kickstarter. I'm gonna go build my camper. If you join us on the 23rd, we'll see you there. Fowler out.